Hey everybody, Mark B. Dub with Gardening Gone Wild. How are you? Hey, I hope that you're doing well. Everything is great here in Utah in September. Man, I can't believe it's already the almost the 15th of September. Halfway through and before you know it, we're gonna have a little bit more snow flying around up on the mountains. The hike that I did on Mount Timonogos, remember that? It was uh, actually received snow the next evening that I hiked up there, so I was pretty fortunate not to be up there when, when it starts snowing. Of course, it didn't really snow where I was hiking, it just snowed up on the tippy top, uh, right at, at about 11 and a half thousand feet, so I was okay. Hope you enjoyed that hike video. I know it was a little long, but man, there was so much beautiful uh, scenery to share with you that I just couldn't resist. So hopefully you'll you'll be able to make it through it and come back and watch it at different times and, and enjoy the beautiful scenery that's there on the backside of Mount Timpanogos here in Utah. So about six weeks ago, or there, maybe uh, five weeks, I did a video on poinsettias in the greenhouse. Remember that? Many of you have watched it, many of you have liked it, and some of you have made comments. Hey listen, if you like what you see in my videos, hit the like button, will ya? And if you want to make a comment, I'd love to hear your comments, questions, whatever you want, okay? Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do it. All it takes is a click of the button, and there'll be plenty more videos to come, okay? So today I'm back in the greenhouse. Um, as you can see, I've got the poinsettias here. And uh, I'm gonna show you a little practice that we do with poinsettias. In case you're wondering, some of you maybe wanna try to grow them in your little greenhouse out back. Just let me tell you, it could get costly because you've gotta keep your temperatures in your greenhouse pretty warm at night and pretty warm during the day. And if you're in a uh, climate where you get cold days and cold nights getting into October and November, and even into December, uh, it's gonna take a lot of heat to keep those up to the temperatures that you need so that they'll grow. I like to keep my temperatures during the day in the greenhouse around 78 to 80. That helps them to be cozy warm and get the growth that they need. I like to give them full sun, as much sun as they can get because remember, we're on the downhill and our days are getting shorter. And before you know it, we'll have the shortest day of the year in December on the 21st, okay? Poinsettias are kind of fickle in that way. They need that extra light. So sometimes you can manipulate the light source that you have within your greenhouse or with whatever you're doing, okay? But the nice thing about it is, is they'll definitely adapt to the shorter days as they get shorter. And I'll, I'll be making more videos to show you uh, what the poinsettias do uh, when the days are getting really short and the leaves start to change color. But today in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you how to hard pinch your poinsettias. Coming up. Dub here. Thanks again for watching. So when I say hard pinch on poinsettias, what I'm talking about is actually pinching the apical dominant stem. You want the plant to branch out. You want it to grow more bracts, as we call them, as we call them. A lot of people mistake the bracts as the flowers. And the bracts are the modified leaves of the poinsettia. The flower is actually in the center of the bracts, which are the, you get about five or six or seven different modified leaves, which could be red or pink or white. And the flower is in the middle of those red leaves and it's called the cyathea. And it's actually yellow. It's where the flower produces the nectar and the pollen for any pollinators that might be out in the area we don't have too many in the greenhouse. But even if, if they're outside, like in California, you can grow poinsettias. Uh, Central, South America, you can grow poinsettias outside. 
In fact, the history of the poinsettia goes back as far as the late 1800s when a gentleman who was the first ambassador for the United States to Mexico, his name was Joel Roberts Poinsett. He saw the poinsettia on the side of a dusty road in Mexico. Um, again, he was the ambassador to Mexico for the president of the United States. And he was out for a walk, taking a leisure walk, and came upon this plant that was very beautiful. Well, it didn't, wasn't called the poinsettia back then. It was known as the Euphorbia pulcherima. And that is a scientific name for the poinsettia. It wasn't until the late 1800s after he brought some snippets or pieces of the plant back to the United States to his plantation in South Carolina that he started growing them. And then he had a friend from Pennsylvania that decided after Mr. Robert or Poinsett passed away that they would name it the Poinsettia in honor of Joe Roberts Poinsett. And now today you'll find Poinsettias all over the world in every type of setting. All right. Let's get back to the reason why we're here today. That just give you a little bit of history of the poinsettia, okay? And maybe we'll throw a little bit more in, in another time. So when you make a hard pinch, you're actually using scissors, or as we call them here in school, we call them skizzers. And so you make about, uh, you take about three to four leaves off of the apical dominant stem that goes up and down, and then your leaves actually come off of that, off of that main stem. The reason we take three to four leaves is because we want it to branch out. It'll force the plant to branch out, therefore giving you more bracts. To have a really nice poinsettia, you want about six to eight bracts with about six to eight leaves on each bract with that sciathy in the center that's yellow. And then you have the dark green leaves throughout the rest of the plant, okay? So here I have in my hand this beautiful poinsettia. Um, I've always grown up to calling it poinsettia, but if you want to go by the way it's spelled, it's spelled poinsettia, not poinsettia, okay? But this is a nice specimen of a poinsettia, okay? In fact, these are the ones that we planted about six weeks ago, the, the, the first week of August here in the greenhouse. And if you remember, and I'll show you some pictures as we go through the video, if you remember, they were quite small. In fact, they were about that small right there if you see my fingers right here okay now and that was about two inches now they're about five to six inches tall so when I like to um, hard pinch or to cut my apical dominant stem what I'm doing is I'm actually going to count these bigger leaves right here okay there's one there's two there's three and then I'm thinking that this is my fourth one now if you look at the stem, just right inside of here, the stem, this is your apical dominant stem, what I'm doing is I'm actually counting the leaves as they come out towards the bottom of each of the three or four leaves that I'm counting to cut off, okay? Now again, want to get a nice little pair of skizzers, okay, now I'm not sure what kind of scissors you have, it doesn't have to be Milwaukee, it could be just a regular pair of skizzers. Folks, the thing to remember is, is to make sure that your scissors are clean, okay? Dip them in some Clorox a day or two before. Clean your scissors really well because poinsettias, remember, are very um, fickle or they're very temperamental to diseases and viruses and things like that, okay? Remember how I kind of compared them somewhat to a, a preemie baby where you've got to really protect them and take good care of them and watch them closely, okay? poinsettias are just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count this leaf right here. This is one. And then I've got this leaf over here on this side, which is number two. And then this leaf is right here. It's just underneath that one. And then here's my fourth leaf right here. You see that right there? So I'm basically going to come down here. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to cut it at an angle. Now watch this close, guys. See, I've got my scissors in there. I'm going to cut it at an angle. And then there's the part that I cut off right here, okay? You'll notice my top part right here. If you look right here, you've got the white sap. That's actually the lactose or the sap that's inside of the poinsettia. They're related to the milkweed plant, and that's a milky white substance 
that is uh, sticky. So that's how you cut or how you hard pinch a poinsettia plant. Now, notice I've got this leaf right here. I've got this leaf over here, right here. And I've got this one over here, uh, this leaf. These are some really nice leaves that are gonna give the plant the optimum sunlight from the sun and perform the, the uh, uh, activity called photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is where the plant absorbs the light, turns that light into energy or carbohydrates, sugars as we call them, that feeds the plant along with the fertilizer that you feed them through the system of your watering system. And then um, it takes it back up through the, the plant itself and distributes it out through all the cells in the different parts of the plants. Now you remember what this part right here is called? This red part? That's the petiole. Some people call it the stem, the leaf stem, okay? But that's the petiole right there. Um, and then you have your apical dominant stem, which is the part that we cut, okay? Let's do another one, okay? All right, let's say we're gonna cut this one right here, okay? This is a pretty nice specimen of a plant. Um, got lots of nice big green leaves on there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count my leaves, okay? So Here's one right here. And here's the next one down, number two. And then of course over here, number three. And then this one would be number four. Okay, and so I'm gonna go down here, go one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna cut that, if you can see right down here on the stem, watch my scissors kind of sliding in there. Um, I'm gonna cut that at an angle, you ready? Now that kind of hurts, doesn't it? You're cutting all those leaves off there, but guess what? You've got to do that in order to multiply the bracts on your plant. You go to the store, whether it's a box store, your favorite greenhouse and nursery that sells poinsettias, they do the same process because it causes the plant to branch out and to give you more bracts or more flowers and things like that, the modified leaves, okay? Now I cut it at an angle because if when I'm watering, I don't want my plant to be level, and then all of a sudden I'm collecting water on top of that plant. Maybe some disease or virus gets in there, okay? So you gotta be very careful about that. And so make sure that you cut it at an angle. And this, this, is, uh, this is good to know for any other plant that you're trying to make cuttings of, if it's, if it's approved to do it, uh, because you gotta be careful sometimes. The, a lot of plants are patented. And if you start making uh, cuttings of plants that are patented and try to sell them, you can get in a lot of, a lot of deep doo-doo, okay? All right. So think about what we've been talking about, okay? We're hard pinching or cutting three to four leaves off of the apical dominant stem. We're cutting at an angle so that when the plant heals itself up, the water runs off and not down inside. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, let them grow. I'll come back in a couple of weeks and we'll perform some other important parts of the uh, poinsettia growing uh, procedures and uh, give you guys some more uh, uh, opportunities to learn about growing poinsettias, okay? All right. I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched. My name is Mark V-Dub. I'm with Gardening Gone Wild. I'm in the greenhouse, inside where it's nice and warm, and the poinsettias are growing awesome. Next time, what we're gonna learn about is applying a fungicide and a insecticide to the plants. Very important to apply to help them be able to withstand any insects that try to attack them, which could be a white fly or a fungus gnat. Those are the two most uh, prevalent insects that attack poinsettias. They will also talk about a plant growth regulator, or a PGR, uh, called CycleCell. And that's what we use so that the plant doesn't grow too fast. It kind of slows down the process of its life cycle and allows it to fatten up or to branch out and provide more bracts. So you have a really nice end product in December. So until next time, I'm Mark V. Dub in the greenhouse. Gardening Gone Wild, thanks so much for watching. Be safe, and we'll see you next time. All right, we're gonna cut just a few more here. 
just so you get a better idea of what we're doing. Uh, cutting a couple of them I felt like wasn't enough for you to really grasp onto it. Of course, I know that you can take the video and re -pause, or pause it, go back, pause it, go back, and whatnot. But let's do, let's do a few more, okay? So remember, we want to take this branch, this leaf here. Uh, this one right here is a little bit small. And of course, you have other little leaves on there you also need to be really careful about that you don't hit them or nick them and damage them because that's what's going to be your future uh, dark green leaves on your plant. So we have this, this leaf here. This one's next because it's the second one down below that other one on, this, on the apical dominant stem. Just right down here, okay, the apical dominant stem right here. So we have one, two, three, this leaf here, and then our fourth one is this one kind of hiding inside the container right there. That's number four. And remember, I'm just going to grab my scissors right here, snip, 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 and I'm going to go down that fourth branch, and I'm going to put it right on my, let's see, make sure you can see this right here. I'm going to put it right there on the stem, and I'm going to snip it at an angle. And you saw that I snipped it because this whole piece right here fell, and then there you go, okay? There's your white sappy substance right there. It's called lactose. It's the milk inside the poinsettia. It's also right here on the stem, the apical dominant stem. So now, notice if you can see that little leaf right here by my fingernail. That'll be a nice little branch that'll come out and give us some more color of green and so forth. And so that's the important thing to know, okay? So there's another one. Let's take and cut another one, okay? Now some of you might have plants that are just a little bit smaller. Like this little guy here is only about four inches tall compared to the other five to six or better tall. And so I want to be a little more careful. I don't want to cut off a whole bunch. Because remember, the plant needs photosynthesis going on. And the more or the bigger the leaves I cut off, the less photosynthesis is going to come down from the sun, okay? So remember that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm only probably going to cut three off this time. So I've got one here, I've got two over here, and I've got my third one right there. And so what I want to do is I want to do this. I want to see if I can zoom in a little bit, okay? Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you, right? Let's see, right there. Let's get it. There we go. How's that? Beautiful. Good thing we can edit all these. So here's my scissors, right here, right? Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna get close here with that plant. Make sure that it's focused pretty good, it is. Then I'm gonna bring my scissors right through here. Okay, you see my scissors coming in, they're silver. And I'm gonna cut right under that third branch, just right here. That actually fell on the floor, which is okay, because I'm not gonna reuse it. So I left a nice big leaf over here. I left one right here in the front and then back here on the back, and then a smaller one here that's got four or five nice leaves for photosynthesis for that to uh, get the sunshine that it needs to build up the energy for the plant, okay? Pretty nice, huh? Remember to cut them at an angle. Okay, let's do another one here for you. Hopefully you're okay not looking at my face. You'll look at my Utah State University Aggies sweat or shirt that I'm wearing. Okay, here we go. A lot of big leaves on this plant. You can see them right there. Look how many big leaves. It's just a gorgeous plant. They're dark green. Uh, we use a fertilizer. It's called Peter's 202020. And I use that uh, religiously on my poinsettias for the last 8 to 15 years. That's a big spread, 8 to 15. <laughs> I've actually been growing poinsettias now for about uh, 13 years. Okay. I didn't really care to grow them. There was too much work for what I was doing at the time and there was too much competition with all the box stores and all the other stores to, to try to grow them and sell them. But in the education arena, that's where I'm at right now, okay? So here we go. We've got a leaf here. Okay, let's back up a little bit, can we? Okay, here we go. Back up just, yeah, right there. Perfect. So leaf one, leaf two. Um, leaf three over here on this side, this one, and leaf four. So it's almost like I'm walking down a set of stairs and I'm taking 
the next leaf down as I would the next step down for my walking downstairs. So leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, and leaf four. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna go in here, one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna carefully cut them just right there. You see my scissors coming in right there. Be very careful. Cut it at an angle, just like that. There's the ones I cut off right here. And then here's my plant right here where I cut it. Right there, you can see the sap coming out of it right there, okay? Right by my finger now. All right, guys, you're awesome. Have a great day. I know growing poinsettias a lot of times isn't practical for all of us. Some of us might want to venture off and try it in our greenhouses we have out back. Or even if we're at a, a greenhouse business or something like that, we've never grown them before. Um, it's, it's fun. It's exhilarating. And the end results, if you follow the pattern of what you need to do, it's awesome. I'm Mark B. Dove, Gardening Gone Wild. Grow on, poinsettias. Grow on.